All right, party people. So this is the CMMG Banshee 2022 version. It's been updated since their previous version. Right now, this is my favorite nine millimeter AR pistol of all time. However, if you're not a fan of pistol caliber carbines, don't worry because there is a lot more to this guy than meets the eye. So before we get too far into the woods on talking about what's the difference between the new 22 version of the CMMG Banshee versus the original CMMG Banshee, I wanted to kind of give you just a little bit of a rundown of what my experience is like with nine millimeter or pistol caliber carbines in general, because I think that's important. That way we have a reference point on where I'm coming from in regards to this review. My first experience with a pistol caliber carbine dates back to 2017 when I did a build on this Ingstat Arms UDP-9. Now back when I built this guy, it was very difficult and very expensive to get a nine millimeter AR pistol that had a last round bolt hold open that also used Glock magazines. And this was one of the few that did that. A year after that in 2018 was when I got the CMMG Banshee when it was first released. I've done about five or six, probably even more videos on this guy as of right now. This had a lot going for it because it had something called radial delay blowback. And if you're not familiar with it, I'll go over it really quick. Most nine millimeter AR pistols are direct blowback, meaning they use a different style bolt carrier group. Just the pressure from the round going out the barrel allows allows the bolt to cycle. CMMG noticed that on nine millimeter AR pistols that the bolt would open a little bit prematurely before the projectile was completely out of the barrel and therefore they developed a different type of bolt carrier group that's more similar to an AR-15 bolt carrier group. But what it does is it allows the bolt milliseconds of delay before it completely unlocks. That way the projectile is completely out of the barrel before it unlocks because if you get early unlocking, it lowers the velocity of the round. But in addition to that, radial delay blowback offers a lot softer of a recoil impulse. Not that nine millimeter has high recoil, but you can see the difference right here where I did a test with radial delay versus standard blowback. Oh, big difference in the radial delay. Holy cow. <laughs> Pretty big difference, huh? So over the course of a year or so with the CMG Banshee, I upgraded some parts because there were some things about it that I just didn't particularly care for. Number one, this one did not come with this linear comp that's on here right now. We'll talk about this linear comp later. It came with just a thread protector. So you could thread on your own muzzle device of your choosing, or you could thread on a suppressor. It also came with a mil spec trigger, which I swapped out really quickly. Came with the wrong angled grip, where it was angled back a little bit too far, so I changed that out. And the brace, it did come with, but it didn't come with the brace that's on it now. But a few months after this was released, they developed something called the rip brace and the rip stock, where you can just pull it out like that and get it to full extension. This particular CMMG Banshee has been incredibly reliable. I don't think I've ever had a malfunction in it. I have tested a ton of different magazines through it and every single one of them has functioned flawlessly. Now I can't say that that's everyone else's experience with the CMMG Banshee, but that's mine. As we moved into 2019, I started playing with caliber conversions. And those are essentially where you take a standard mil spec AR-15 lower and you get your dedicated caliber upper and then you can get various forms of magazine conversions. The first one I tried was a mag block that goes into the lower receiver that allows it to accept Glock magazines or Colt magazines. I like them but they just weren't really my cup of tea, uh, mainly because you had a different place where you released the magazine and therefore I just didn't like them as much. Then a month or so later, Mean Arms came out with something called the Endomag, which allows you to use a standard lower, you put a nine millimeter upper on it, then you get a different set of guts that go into your standard PMAGs and nine millimeter and still have last round bolt hold open. The downside to the Endomags were they only worked on direct blowback uppers, meaning they wouldn't work with CMMG uppers. So then CMMG decided we're gonna release our own PMAGs that work with 
radial delay blowback uppers. Then I got into other caliber conversions like this one, which is the 5.7, and it comes with its own conversion mag, and it still retains all the functionality of a standard AR-15. Then moving into 2021, I got this guy right here from Foxtrot Mike. This is their nine millimeter AR pistol, and it is the most affordable nine millimeter AR pistol that I've ever fired in my life. And it also accepts Glock magazines, and it also has last round bolt hold open. But this was only about a $600 gun and it works flawlessly. Again, it's direct blowback. It's not radial delayed or anything like that. And now we come into 2022 and not only do I have the CMMG Banshee, but I have a couple of other surprises that are coming in the very near future. The first one is the CMMG Descent that is a totally different animal, and this one's chambered in 300 blackout. But not only that, I also got the brand new Ingstat Arms MDP9, which is very similar to the CMMG Descent, but it's not a direct competitor, but we will have videos on these in the future. I still need to get more rounds through them before I can really make a video. So that's coming in the future, so if you're not subscribed, make sure you hit the subscribe button. But the benefit to both of these is they can be fired in the folded position, or you can choose not to run a brace with them at all. I wanted to bring up my experience with 9mm AR so you can know exactly where I'm coming from. When it comes to a 9mm AR, they basically need to have two things for me. Number one, they need to be compatible with the same magazines that I use on my carry gun. So I carry a Glock 19 usually, or some kind of variant of a Glock 19. So I'd like my pistol caliber carbines to also share the same magazine. And so that way, if I'm on a road trip or something like that, and I wanna carry some kind of AR for you know personal defense, I don't gotta worry about carrying extra magazines. Now, there are pros and cons to using these for self-defense, just like there are with 5.56, 300 blackout, and all that other stuff. The reasoning I kinda like these is because number one, I can fill it up with the same ammunition that I use for self-defense, which are usually Federal HST or some kind of Hornady critical duty. I don't have to worry quite as much about over-penetration with a nine millimeter hollow point as I do with say something that's a rifle caliber. And you might be wondering, well, what's the point of even carrying this when you can just use your handgun? Well, I'm glad you brought that up. One, you can get an eight inch barrel, which is gonna give you slightly higher velocities out of your round. The second reason is on your standard handgun, you have two points of contact and you gotta, you know, put the dot on the threat or align your sights. And when you're nervous and your heart beats very high, we tend to shake a little bit. However, with something like this, technically, you can get at least three points of contact or four if you incidentally, accidentally shoulder it. You get your grip hand, you got your support hand, you got your cheek, and then if you incidentally shoulder it, you kind of have a little bit of a rest right there. And what that does is, although the round itself isn't that much more lethal, when you're nervous and your heart rate's very high, you're more accurate with the shots that you're taking with something with this many points of contact versus a handgun. Now let's talk about what's different about the new CMMG Banshee versus the old one. So on the old design, these came in three spec levels. There was the Banshee 100, Banshee 200, and Banshee 300. And all that essentially meant was the higher level ones, you got different Cerakote colors and you got like a brace and a muzzle device and things like that. Whereas on the 100 level, you typically, I think in the early days, you only got a buffer tube, no brace, no muzzle device, and I don't think you were able to get different colors. So on the new 22 version, they got rid of all those different spec levels. We'll talk about the pricing and stuff here in a minute because there's a lot of ways you can finagle it to get out a little bit cheaper. Now, some things that are the same from the old version to the new version is you can still get a ton of different colors. You can get armor black, charcoal green, coyote tan, midnight bronze, sniper gray, which is the one that I have here, and titanium, which I have right here. Now, at the very beginning of the video, I said, if you don't like pistol caliber carbines, hang on for a second because this has a lot more tricks up its sleeve. And that's because the new Banshees are available in 11 different calibers. You can get them in 22 long rifle. You can get them in 300 blackout. You can get them in 308 Winchester, which I think is pretty awesome. You can get them in 40 Smith and Wesson 45 ACP, nine millimeter. You can get them in the new 4.6 by 30 round which I did a review on a few months back. You can get them in 5.56, you can get them in 5.7 by 39, which I happen to have right here, and I've made a couple different videos about this one. You can get them in 7.62 by 39, also known as your AK-47 rounds. And last but not least, you can get them in 10 millimeter, the best millimeter, I'm just kidding. So what's different on the 22 model? It's not a lot, but it is a lot. 
Let me explain. Still has the same radial delay blowback system, at least on your pistol calibers. Um, the main differences are gonna come, it's got a new hand guard with some different designs. We also have a different upper receiver. They decided to get rid of the forward assist and they put in some cool milling, stuff like that. On the lower receiver, the lower is essentially the same as the old one. The main difference on the lower is where the safety selector is. It now says safe and semi at a 45 degree angle instead of the 90 degree angle. On the old version, you got a 90 degree ambidextrous safety and the safety levers were very reminiscent of something that was mil spec. However, now you got a 4590 safety selector and the right side where your trigger finger is, is a lot lower profile and shorter than the dominant side. And you can switch those around as your little heart desires if you're left-handed. You now have a sleeker polymer dust cover instead of your standard mil spec. You also have an upgraded bolt catch, bolt release, and you now have a better grip angle than you had before. Before it, the angle wasn't right for a pistol and you know a lot of people had to swap those out. And also now it comes with the CMMG rip brace from the factory, whereas on the old one, on the early versions, I know for a fact on the old one, you didn't get the rip brace. I don't know if they started including that in later iteration of the first generation Banshee, but now this is standard with the SBA3 brace. Now, if you're looking at the CMMG website, it can get a little bit confusing because there's a lot of different configurations that you can get with a lot of these pistols. For example, with the nine millimeter version, there's four different magazine options. You can get a Glock mag, you can get a Colt style mag. They have one for a P320 mag for nine millimeter. Then you can use the one that has the PMAG conversion on a standard lower, like I showed you a few minutes ago. Now, if you want the 40, the 45, or the 10 millimeter, they only make them in Glock mag variations. If you get the 5.7 or the 4.6 by 30, then you're gonna get their own proprietary mags, but they're about the same size as a PMAG. And then for the other standard rifle calibers, like 308, 556, 762, all those things, you're gonna use the appropriate magazine like you'd use in any other AR style rifle. Now, aside from you know doing away with the forward assist on the new version, there's a lot of cosmetic changes as well. Uh, most of the functional changes that are on the gun are also cosmetic changes. You know, for example, with the old style handguard, you had Picatinny that went all the way across the top. Now they forego the Picatinny in the middle so you can get a little bit better of a grip without chewing up your thumb when you're doing a C clamp grip. Now that I've dumped all this product knowledge on you, let's talk about this. What does it feel like to shoot? Locks open on the last round. That's literally the very first mag that I've put through this gun in its bottom bucket nine millimeter. Like it's not reload, but it's close. My first couple of trips out to the range, the gun shot flawlessly. I never had a single malfunction with it. I know I've put more than 600-ish rounds through this gun. I just can't remember exactly because I was counting the magazines and I know that a couple of the magazines weren't completely full. So I know it's over 600, I just don't know how far over 600 we did it. Now linear compensators are great. It kind of just throws the blast down range. It helps push the gun straight into you instead of allowing the muzzle to rise. On my original CMMG Banshee, I now have the linear comp on it because I was testing it, but I always had a flash can on it that stuck out a little bit further. And I felt like that flash can really helped with the muzzle rise and the recoil impulse more so than their linear comp. Not that it's bad, it just wasn't really my flavor. But despite that, and despite having a mil spec trigger in it, it was very easy to shoot. It was very easy to shoot fast and very easy to shoot fast accurately, which is very important. However, I decided to make a couple of modifications. I got Magpul inbus sights on here. I got the Holosun 510C. I love this red dot to death. It's one of my all time favorite red dots for ARs. Popped out the mil spec trigger with the blackout defense zero trigger. I went into a lot more detail on that trigger in my last video that I just uploaded a couple of weeks ago on this guy right here, the blackout defense DTL rifle. I also put one of the Strike Industries nine millimeter compensators on it. I just had it in a box laying around. I don't remember the name of it off the top of my head, so I will put the name of it on the screen. I will say I didn't notice a huge difference with the blast forwarding device on it versus without it because it's nine millimeter, but I just wanted to test it out and see what it would do. Now, once I did at least these two upgrades with the trigger and the muzzle device, I was able to shoot this guy much faster and much more accurately at faster speeds than I was with the linear comp that came with it and the mil spec trigger that came with it.
Now I showed you the difference between these bulk carrier groups from radial delay and direct blowback earlier in the video, but there is another benefit to the radial delay, which is it allows you to use any AR-15 trigger, aftermarket trigger that your little heart desires. Because on a standard blowback, you can't typically use regular drop-in triggers. They have to be made specifically for nine millimeter. I don't know all the technical details, but most trigger manufacturers have told me it's the way that the hammer engages with the bolt carrier group when it's resetting and everything. And if you put a standard AR-15 trigger in a direct blowback nine millimeter AR, sometimes the hammer can break or you could just not work in general. So the cool thing about this is you can use standard drop-in AR-15 triggers. You can get nine millimeter or regular ones. In this one, I have the Blackout Defense Zero trigger. And this is a trigger that I've talked about in probably the past two videos, but I wanted to show it to you real fast. If you didn't watch my previous two videos, there's zero take up on this. Now let me show you this break and reset. If you blink, you'll miss it. All of their triggers are single stage, but they do have three different uh, trigger shoes that you can choose from. This is the hybrid one. And they have two different trigger weights. I believe they have three pounds and then they have four pounds. And this one is pulling right at the three pound mark, which is perfect according to their specifications on them. I do have a really awesome code for these. All that stuff will be in the first link in the description. And then right here, I have the new Viridian HS1 hand stop that doubles as a green laser. I don't know if you guys can see that. Pretty cool, right? Now I will say one thing about this hand stop. I love it. It's amazing. It's only like $129 and it's awesome. I'll have links down in the description below if you wanna check that out. However, it's got this little button right here and that's how you activate the laser. The one thing I don't like about it is it's impossible to shoot without activating the laser. So if you were in a situation where you're room clearing and you didn't wanna have a laser shining, you might not wanna use that. So that's a downside. It's not a review of it, just one of the downsides that I noticed. Now I will say this, if you're debating between a five inch and the eight inch barrel, I highly recommend the eight inch barrel. In comparison to my five inch version over there, this one feels a lot more balanced, easier to shoot, and has a little bit lower of a recoil impulse. Not that the recoil is bad by any stretch of imagination. I just noticed that it's a lot easier to control with less effort. I like the eight inch better. And like I said in the beginning of the video, this is now my favorite AR pistol chambered in nine millimeter that I've ever fired before. And I don't say that lightly. I mean, you guys know that watch my videos. If a product sucks or I don't like it, I'm not afraid to say it on camera and I'm not afraid to burn a bridge with a company because they make a subpar product. But I can say that this is all it's cracked up to be. But despite how awesome I think this gun is, this does raise a few questions. Like for example, what if you already own a CMMG Banshee version one? Is it worth it to upgrade to the newer version? And that kind of depends on what your goals are for your gun and what your budget is like. And we'll get into the pricing of them here in a minute, but this is gonna be very important. If you own a version one, I wouldn't rush out to buy version two. But if you just must have the latest and greatest parts on this, you don't need the entire gun. You just need some parts. For example, if you look at the lower receiver on the version one and on the version two, they're virtually identical. The only difference between them is where the markings are for safe and semi. On the newer version, it's at the 45 degree angle. On the older version, it's at a 90 degree angle. So your lower, it's basically the same thing. The upper and the handguard are where things get a lot more intricate and different. You know, the handguard's completely different. The upper has some really sexy milling on it, and they also decided to get rid of this forward assist, and they got a nicer dust cover on it. Well, if you own this one currently, you can get the new upper that has the upgraded dust cover, and you can get the handguard coated to match the lower that you already have because all the colors on the new versions are basically the same as the colors on the old version. So as an example, the handguard, at least if you want like a seven inch handguard for the eight inch barrel or something like that, that's gonna be about $175. A stripped upper is gonna be about $150. Then you could take your barrel off of this, put it onto the new upper, slap your bolt and your charging handle in it, 
put it on this and you essentially will have something very close to the new version. Then if you upgrade the bolt catch, which only costs about 15 bucks, if you get the safety, which I think costs $39 for the new version, and then you can change out the grip angle, the new grip is only about $17. For a total of about $450 to $482, you can take your old CMMG Banshee and upgrade it to be just like the new one and have the matching colors. Or if you don't wanna go through all that trouble, you can buy a complete upper. I believe they're about $9.50 to $9.99, depending on if you get the five inch or the eight inch. So you have options. You don't necessarily need to take this and run out and buy this. If you don't care about what the handguard looks like, if you don't care about what the upper receiver looks like, and you just want some cool safeties and the nice bolt catch and the better grip angle, you can get all that stuff for less than $100. From a performance standpoint, I just happen to like the eight inch a lot more than the five inch, but they are basically the same thing. They still both have a mil spec trigger so that's definitely something worth upgrading if you are thinking about getting one of these now something i always like to answer is most of the guns and parts that we review on this channel are sent to us and i don't pay for them with money i pay for them with my time i pay for them with gas i pay for them with spending money on ammo and you know one of these videos can cost me upwards of you know a thousand dollars or more to make depending on how much ammo has to go through it you know with six thousand dollar camera setups all that stuff and editing computers it really adds up so although i don't pay for them with money i really do feel like i've spent a lot on the products because of my time that I've invested. But the question I wanted to answer is, if it was my own money and I was in the market for a nine millimeter AR, would I buy it knowing what I know now? And the answer is yes and no. And I know the no might be making you wonder because I just said that this is my favorite AR pistol that I've ever fired. Well, I'd say it depends on what your goals are. If you're looking for a nine millimeter pistol where you want to be able to exchange mags, whether it be a nine millimeter P320 or a Glock, then I would say, yes, it's worth it, go get it. Uh, I believe these are about 1700-ish, something like that for the Glock mag version. However, if you don't care about the magazine swappability, I would suggest a different route. And this route has a lot of other pros that come with it, such as being able to swap between calibers on the fly. Option number one, I would get either the 5.56 version, the 300 blackout version, the 5.7 version, or the 4.6 version, something that has the magwell of a full-size AR-15. And to put this into perspective for you, let's pretend that this lower receiver here is from CMMG. And say I just bought one that has the full-size magazine well. Now I can swap out to a different upper, like this one that has the 5.7 upper and the 5.7 mag. And now I can shoot whatever caliber I purchased plus 5.7. I could take this nine millimeter upper and I could put it on and I can use the nine millimeter still get last round bolt hold open. In addition to that, let's pretend you have a 5.56 or a 2.23 upper. You can get the CMMG conversion kit for 22 long rifle. All it is is a bolt carrier group, goes right into your 2.23 or 5.56 upper. And then it comes with, I believe, three uh, magazines. They have different capacities depending on what state you live in. And now you can shoot 22 out of the same gun for a heck of a lot cheaper than you could even shoot nine millimeter for. Now I'll have links in the description so you can check this stuff out for yourself. But if you go over to their website, you will see of the four different nine millimeter magazine options, the cheapest one is gonna be your Colt style mags. And I believe those are $1,525. The most expensive version is the P320, which is 1750. The next expensive is going to be the Glock mag, which is 1700 even. But here's the thing, they have a version that uses the conversion mags with the full size lower and they're $15.49. So $150 cheaper if you got a standard lower with the conversion mag for nine millimeter versus the Glock mag. But then you also get the additional benefit of being able to swap a ton of different calibers around. Now you might be the kind of person, just depending on who, what your circumstances are, that doesn't really have the budget to even do that, to get the $15.49. Well then just take any standard lower, like from PSA, I'll have links in the description for it, but PSA, you can get complete lowers for like 200 bucks, sometimes a lot less, like 150 bucks. And then you can go get the CMMG Banshee radial delayed upper with the conversion mags, and you could have a complete setup for about, I don't know, 1100 bucks, $1,200. But I say all that to say this, these are very nice ARs and their price does reflect them, but there are ways to finagle it. So if you really want radial delay, which I totally recommend radial delay over direct blowback for the reasons I mentioned earlier, 
you can still do so at a relatively lower cost. But at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter what I think. I never suggest you just watch my video and say, cool, I like that, that's what I'm gonna get. Go watch other channels that have done the same kind of reviews on the same products and see what their experiences are like because I've had many experiences in the past where I've gotten a sample size of one and I had a fantastic experience and everyone else had a horrible experience or vice versa, I had a horrible experience and everyone else had a good experience. If you want more information about this, follow the first link in the description there is some super secret stuff there for you. Wink, wink. Let me know what your thoughts are down in the comments section. But until next time, guys, I love you. You guys stay sexy.